Hey, welcome back to the workshop. This is Jacob with the wood plank. And today I'm working on an end grain cutting board made from walnut and paduke. I'm gonna be using two separate panels for this build. And here I'm just ripping all the parts to width. I find that by using more than one panel, you're gonna get a wider range of colors and designs. It's a technique that you'll see quite a bit in my work. I want to get all my edges nice and smooth, and I often use my planer as a jointer. As I start to lay these panels out, I want to organize the walnut with the sapwood pointing towards the paduke. So basically I'll be using that as a contrasting color. And oftentimes I'll stack them on top of each other to get a feel for what it's going to look like after I cross cut everything. I really like the way these two colors go together. This is a fairly straightforward pattern, and if you're new to board building, might be a great one to try. Between each glue up I like to get all the surfaces sanded and smooth. This really assures no glue lines when the board is finished. After you've got your design just the way you want it, it really pays to number everything. Now let's give this board a test run. One little design tip here is if you're working with the same color wood on each side of the board, in this case walnut, you can add a piece to each end and frame it out. So here I've added a piece of walnut on the right side and the left side. I think it gives it a nice finished look and really isn't much more work. Up tip number 215 layout and preparation.
you're going to be making end grain boards, I would highly suggest a flattening jig. It does not have to be complicated, but as long as the sled portion is super flat. I'm using a Milwaukee 3 horsepower router with a Infinity Tools Mega Dado router bit. This board is really coming along nicely. Next up we'll make our finger grips and profiles and these are the router bits I use for that. With this jig and handhold I'll start from the outside and work my way in. This will prevent any tear out, makes things a lot easier. Here I'm adding a small round over to the bottom of the handle. I think it just adds a little extra comfort when you're picking the board up. And finally we're going to put a round over profile on both top and bottom. I'll start sanding at 80 grit and work my way to 150. After that, I'll spray the board with water and raise the grain. Then I'll come back with 150 grit and finish with 220. Next I'll pre-drill and attach the rubber feet. I try to make each board as unique as possible, and this one certainly exceeded my expectations. If one of these creations ends up in your kitchen, I just want to thank you ahead of time. I know your food's going to taste better being cut on it. I mean, just look at that. There's a lot of love in that board. Thanks for watching from the wood plank. Buddy, the crossbow. Some of us who solve don't know that the floods 